Question. Which card would you rather have? A Gem Mint 10 Berry Bonds or a PSA 8 Mark McGuire? It's an easy choice for me. Before we get started, please hit that subscribe button. It would really help me out. Okay. So I've said in some of my previous videos that sports cards were my first love in collecting. I used to love baseball so much that I would look through the box scores in the newspaper anytime, anytime I could get a hold of one as a kid to see how the most home runs or RBIs or hits the day before. I grew up a Dodgers fan because I was born and raised in LA. I probably went to 15 Dodger games as a kid, as a kid and I loved every second of it. I was a huge baseball fan up until 1994 when I was in college and they had the strike. I was so mad because here I was a poor college student and by the way I discovered that you can live on four dollars a week for food. Hearing these millionaires playing a game were mad because they weren't making enough money. And yeah I know the owners were making a lot more at the time. But I didn't care because I was struggling just to live. So I said, screw baseball. It made me love basketball even more than I already did. It wasn't until the Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa home run saga in 1998 that I slowly crept back into liking baseball. The 1985 Topps Mark McGuire Olympic rookie card was one of the first cards I ever owned, so it'll always have a special place in my collection. The freaking guy hit 49 home runs as a rookie. And for me, seeing people hit gargantuan home runs is far more exciting than someone who just gets a lot of singles or doubles. So I just finished the ESPN documentary Long Gone Summer and it brought back a lot of memories, especially Harry Carey. I forgot how great it was to hear him and see him announce the Cubs games and see his love for the game. So when I had a newfound love of sports cards about a month ago, one of the first cards I ordered off of eBay was a PSA graded eight Mark McGuire rookie card. I was really excited to get it and it, when it showed up in the mail, I ripped open the package and it was a Barry Bonds card. Very disappointed. I guess the seller, um, he, he told me anyway that he put his daughter in charge of mailing it off and she sent it to the wrong address. So I'm still in the process of trying to fix that. He keeps, he said that he, he was sending me postage for it, but it hasn't shown up yet. So I don't know. We'll get it cleared up. So b both Sosa and McGuire were roided out of their heads. But it was still exciting. I'm not a Bonds fan because, like as I said, I grew up a Dodger fan. And he played for the Giants. And he just seemed like a jerk. I used to watch Bonds play and I collected a lot of his cards. But if you would have told me that this skinny guy would eventually be the home run leader with 71, 73 in one season, I would have never believed it. Him and his big pumpkin head that kept growing as he pumped more steroids. Hmm. Oh. And just a side note, it's disturbing to see Sammy Sosa with his bleached skin to make it lighter. It's, it's I'll never get used to that. So to this day, I'm still a way bigger basketball fan than baseball, but this documentary definitely had me smiling a lot. I did get choked up watching when he broke the single season record and uh, he picked up his son and everyone in the stadium was going crazy. It was just a special moment. You know, it brought baseball back. And at the end of the day, do I care that they were all juiced out of their heads with steroids? Nah, because it was still fun and it's still hard to hit a baseball. You know, there, there's a lot of skill involved besides just muscle. So it doesn't bother me. But hey, that, that's going to do it for this video. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. Bye for now.